Welcome back to the Marty and Jaden show. I'm Marty and this is Jaden. And we are done with the Words of Radiance. That means two books of the Stormlight Archive down in like two months. <laughs> That's two out of four getting ready for Wind and Truth. The preparation is going strong. And this, this book left off at a pretty crazy scene where Adolin had just had the duel. Kaladin is screaming for a fight with Amaram, then gets thrown in prison. And I, I just thought that was all crazy. And if you haven't listened to last week's, this is from part three, right? So last week's episode, definitely go back and watch that. But we're diving straight in. Right into it. Um, I, I don't have too much to say about the prison scene you get a cool wit story again. Oh, is this the fleet story? This is the fleet story. I like fleet. Yeah. What, was, what did you like about it? Okay, so I love all of wit's stories. That's yeah. a given. Anything the wit says, usually I'm like, I got to make sure I'm paying attention to this. Yes. The reason I like the fleet story is very similar to like the dog and the dragon story. You like it? Diff- it's up there with dog and dragon for you. The reason I like it so much is because it doesn't necessarily have a happy ending, but it has a strong ending. It has an ending where you're just like, Yes, you you just really resonate with the way his story is told mm-hmm. because it doesn't it doesn't just end with some hero winning the day. It ends with Fleet, who's a runner. And I guess the background of the story, if you're you know coming back to part four and you haven't read it in a while, Fleet is a runner who's trying to outrun the storm, like the storm, like the storm wall. Yeah, so he's trying to outrun the storm wall, and he's fast, and he can he can stay away from the storm. He's running as hard as he can. He runs over hills. He runs over rocky terrain. He does all this stuff to try and evade the storm. And eventually, he just cannot run anymore. The storm is catching up to him, catching up to him. He's giving his last breath. He runs and runs until his feet give out. And then the storm catches him and he dies. And imagine that whole story with wit telling it with amazing like little like yeah. flutes and <laughs> the recap instruments. Was, and <laughs> <laughs> the recap was not as good as wit's telling of the story. I will give you that. That's and a high I, bar. <laughs> I will get better. I will. Try but. to make your voice echo with itself so you can sing. <laughs> I'll bring my recorder next time and we'll get that in there. But um, I do think that I like the story specifically for that reason. Because it ends in the sense that he gave everything that he had and then that was enough. And it doesn't have to end in the sense that he's like the winner and the champion and he evaded the storm. It ends with like that he gave it everything. 100%. And that's all he could possibly have done. He lived his best life. And did everything that he could do to outrun the storm. I, I, I think that's cool. And it's fun that you can get a good moral out of a story from Wit, even though it's not a happy one. Yeah. Honestly, I this story did not resonate with me as much as the other one. <gasps> Shock! <laughs> but I am really glad that you explained it the way you did. Because for me, I they're all powerful because Wit's yeah. telling it. I'm like, this is <laughs> a powerful <laughs> story for some reason. Like, <laughs> and, and I'm like... Like for me, it just didn't like really click. I'm like, I think I was probably trying to overthink it with what Wit was trying to tell Kaladin. And I'm like, I have no idea what this means for Kaladin and his story. Like, yeah. And and I just couldn't figure it out. I feel like Wit's talking to me more than I feel yeah. like he's talking to the characters. <laughs> that's probably why it resonated to you. And that's why I was thinking is like, I was just listening to it on the way to work. I just finished that section as I was getting out of the car. And I'm like... What? I should probably just be applying this myself because like, I have no idea what this means for Kaladin. I'm thinking about this too hard. And and he specifically tells you to stop thinking about the meaning of it and like just to like let it happen and let well, you, the meaning come, you know? The, yeah, the meaning yeah, yeah. is very strong. And I think the one thing that relates more to the book than my life in particular is the fact that you can say Journey Before Destination as many times as you want. Mm-hmm. But... It doesn't mean anything until. Oh it really my gosh! Applies. This is totally a journey ver- before exactly. destination yes, story. I didn't even absolutely think- look at these connections. I am so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is but why we have two people in the podcast. Exactly. You have the idiot and the smart about. person. <laughs> <It's just> like- <laughs> and I, most of the time, the big idiot's me because I haven't read this stuff. So the reason I think it's it's cool is because every time we hear a different story, it's like journey before destination told differently, and it means something different to different people. But it's sometimes like when you're reading out of a textbook, it doesn't make as much sense. Like you can say journey before destination. It's all about the, how you get there. But then you tell a story like the fleet story and then it really makes sense. And you're like, okay, that is like the destination was a given. He was going to die and the storm was going to kill him. But what made the difference is that he gave everything that he had. And I just think that's a better way of telling it than just saying journey before destination. Because a lot of people don't understand that. You think about 
all the people that talk to Kaladin and all the like we have a good conversation with Moash. Yep. So that's interesting later. And that's where the story like actually hit me. I'm like, I get it now. He, and mentions, like, he mentions Fleet he, in that I, part. He does. And yeah. like that's where it really connects. I'm like, ah, I got it. But anyway, I so, interrupted you. What the are, stories always make a difference. And I'm just saying a lot of people don't understand what Journey Before Destination means in yep. this book. Just the characters don't understand it as they go forward. And I think Kaladin himself didn't understand it for the most part until we get further and further down the line. But I think it it's cool. To hear Wit's story. And I think that's what resonated with me. The fleet story is what is up I there for me. I like that a lot. And I just speaking of like a lot of people not understanding Journey Before Destination in the book at least, I that was actually one of the things that I really held on to when I like first read this book because I was realized that I do this a lot in my own life. I tend to look forward to Wind and Truth is coming out in December. I feel like I can't wait to that so bad. I just want it to be December right now. <laughs> but like I've got like it's January. That's yeah. like another 11 months from now. Oh. And and like I can't just skip 11 months in my life. I got to be 28 ex- 10 years away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Ghost Bloods book. Are you kidding? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And so I got to find ways to keep myself like happy along the way and like keep enjoying life instead of just like always looking forward to the next thing because I guarantee you once that book comes out wind and truth, I'll be excited for it for the release date. But as I'm reading it, I'm going to be like, but I'm just really excited for book six of way of Kings to come out. And okay. And you have about, a hard time enjoying the moment because of that. Like it happens all the time. Think yeah. about you know, like your last time you had PTO, uh-huh. right? Where you're like, Oh man, we're going to go on this trip. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. And you can spend months getting excited about a trip and then it happens and it's over and you're like whoa like was that like the anticipation was the best part yep (laughs) like it's always good to be going on a trip and stuff but i feel like when you come back from pto you're like did that live up to the hype that i gave it oh yeah so sometimes the destination is not as amazing as we think it is because we just hype it up so much and during that journey and i think that's it's cool to see it played out in this book but it's also so applicable to real life yeah and it's the journey that that shapes you i I um, was going to say something else about that with uh, you're talking about uh, the PTO and like li- looking forward to something that's going to happen. I can't remember. We'll It'll back. come back to you. No <laughs> yeah, worries. Know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But uh, Kaladin eventually gets out of prison. Do we want to talk? He has a conversation with Dalinar. He has a conversation with Wit. And they kind of have this little moment of him trying to figure out getting out of his depression again. But eventually he gets out of prison. Yeah. And that's, that's what I want to talk about. Because right when he gets out, like literally in the antechamber to the prison... Isn't that when Adolin gives him the blade? Okay, I'm going back to the PTO thing. I, I finally thought of what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, I was like this whole time, I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> no, I, I I, want to mention that you were talking about anticipation. Yeah. I actually think anticipation is like a really important part of of life. And There's events. even a spren for it. So. Yeah, anticipation spren. But like that's, it's an important part of an experience. And you see that even within the book, right? The entire time, Sanderson is prepping you for moments within the book and getting you to get the anticipation up and for like this weird event's going to happen in a certain amount of days yeah. or like Kaladin. Has the countdown been happening since book one or is it just book two? Just book two. Okay. Just book two. And But that anticipation though makes for the experience to be great. Without the anticipation and you just have the event, you're missing part of the experience that makes it so good. And That's so true. anticipation is actually a really important part of life because it makes experiences better. I think like if you were to be if you read the plot of a book in like the Cliff Notes version like we all did in high school. If you do that, it's just it's there's no payoff. But mm-hmm. if you read the whole book, you get that experience. So I think that's yeah. you know, books in general I think do a great job of that and understanding of how to keep your anticipation high so you can get to enjoy the story and all that stuff so. totally so we can go jump back sorry i had to get it off my mind i was super distracted and i had that's to get that out that's what the show is all about i know i think it's i think so too <laughs> hopefully people like it yeah, people but. like it. yeah okay <laughs> no great but yeah so he gets out of prison he has those conversations well this is when he starts going dark and starts thinking about he came like, back maybe is right he came back out of it he does at the very end but still thinks that um the elicar should be killed So he does mention, though, that that's a logical decision that he made because he comes out of prison and all of all of Bridge Four is there cheering. Yes. And he said that depression completely went away. And he has his first real smile of the whole series. (laughs) Probably the whole series. Yeah. Yeah. It was so cool to read that. I actually love that part. He's like, and Kaladin smiled a real smile. Like, 
Atta boy, like, like, <laughs> like there you go. Like, oh yeah, that's yeah. cool. I love how loyal his team is to him, and I think that's just a cool moment for him to realize that like he's not by himself, and all of them are supporting him. Yep. And then right there, I coming back to this, he just gets a shard blade. He's like, okay, I want to give you this shard blade and plate, and it's orange. Crazy. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. <laughs> the shard Pretty blade weird. was orange. The shard plate was orange. Oh, the shard plate was orange. I think all the shard blades are silver, right? Okay, yeah. When the shard plate is like they paint it. Yeah, but that's just weird. Gross. <laughs> that's why the guy lost. I know. It's like orange. You can't hide from anyone. You're a moving the, sign. It's like, it's like a construction sign. I'm going to say like a, like a road cone. Yeah. But um, So he gets the shard blade. Or he's given the shard blade. And again, like literally the same exact thing happens. He's like, is it really mine? And the guy's like, yeah, sure. He's like, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy. <laughs> and Adolin's, are you freaking kidding me? And he pulls him out. He's like, you can't. What are you doing? You don't realize, like, are you just not making this like, What are you, an idiot? <laughs> he literally says, like, and he you're gives insane. Him, and he gives him a good point, too. He's like, he's like, this could be the key for you actually challenging Amaram and having a say. Yeah. Which is, like, you I thought was a light eyes. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought was cool. Like, anyways. But he gives it to Moash. He does not take it. We learn a little bit more about that. Why? Later. But Sil specifically says, don't take it. Mm-hmm. And he gives it to Moash, which what an interesting choice. Oh, do you think he, he? Do you think he intentionally did that to say like I'm with you and I support you, or was it just you're the best swordsman? He couldn't have done that without that thought in his mind that he yeah. was going to use it to betray betray the king. Oh man, I know, and I think that's part of the reason why like Sil eventually leaves him in this part. Is he's just made oh, yeah, too we many. Know that that's he's why. made too many decisions down that he road. Decided I think that was that one he of was them. going. I think the conversation that he had with Moash to say, "Yep, I'll help you guys," and then Sil was like, "I can't, I can't participate in this anymore," and she left. Yeah, crazy, super crazy. I uh, also want to mention with the prison is that Adolin also puts himself in prison for those, <laughs> that same time period. I yeah, love like, that, dude. We couldn't do anything about it. He walked in here and yeah. set up shop in the cell. Yeah. <laughs> he still took baths. <laughs> what did he say? Because I'm not a savage or, like, or something. I'm a barbarian. Like, I'm barbarian. I'm like, that's hilarious. He's, he's a funny guy. I know. Adolin is hilarious. Another point for Team Adolin. I, again, I am a major fan of Adolin. I don't know why some people just hate Adolin. I think he's hilarious. He's I think he's a, a great guy. character. I, I thought that was great. Um, yeah. I'm ready to dive into another Wit conversation. Okay, let's do it. So Wit explains his goals for Roshar in this part. I have that written down as the very next note. Okay. And I'm so glad you brought it up because I'm like, <laughs> what part did this happen in? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even sure. Like, yeah. He must have just been talking to somebody. Yeah. But- he talked about what his goals are for Roshar. So what are your thoughts on that, knowing... Yeah, well, recap of, like, Cosmere. like what's going on. So right? I don't have the whole recap. I just have my note. Yeah, same thing as me, so, right? Like, we wrote it down because it was so all impactful. All I know is he talked about the fact that uh, the embodiment spread of hate lives on Roshar. And he yeah. says that his goal is to never let that escape. Yeah, and like, he... That's it. Like, that's and, his main goal and with what Roshar. He, that's he why says, he's here. <laughs> he says that what he does here is more dangerous than you could ever know. He would let the world burn if he has to. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, holy cow. So he would like let everything burn if necessary to keep hate from leaving. on the planet. We learn later his name is Odium. Yeah, I was gonna say, later like, do part. we learn his name in this book? I'm not book? sure if it was then, but we definitely do in this book. Yeah. Yeah. Odium. Odium's a big deal. Apparently killed one of the other gods. Yep. Killed the honor, from what we know. Well, he definitely killed and this is jumping forward in the book a little bit, but he Tanavast. Is that honor? It was honor. Yeah. What, does, I think yeah. Wit mentions so that at the end. He, does. Says, he said, oh, I knew Tanavast, good guy. Yeah, like he, he bought like, me a drink once. <laughs> <laughs> but Tanavast then held the honor shard Yeah. for some point. We know like, I don't know, held the shard is the right way to explain it. Maybe someone with more Cosmere knowledge. But like, we know that some people can embody shards. This is where the commenters and our subscribers should let us know in the comments. Because from other books, we know that when shards have been killed their powers have been dropped per se for other people to pick up and yeah. why has that not happened for honor did he literally destroy the power of honor too i don't or think can so. that happen well we know the storm father is a piece of that then honor. where did it go i think it exists isn't it the honor blades yeah but they're his you, power if you think about scadriel and spoilers for mistborn um there are there was embodiments, yeah, but there was also 
like there Raw there was power. still there the was power, power to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. And why hasn't that happened here with honor? I think honor blades are raw power. Does that does that not make sense? It's Am the I same missing thing something? as like okay, if you have not read Mistborn, please skip forward like two minutes. But like, this is the mist. The mist was also the embodiment of preservation. Yeah. And wouldn't that be like the same idea as the shard blades and the spren and things like that? Just as much as the ATM was the embodiment of the of ruin of ruin. Exactly. But they still had a separate thing that. Um, okay, eventually so, Harmony was able to pick up and grab yeah, both shards how, together. How does it not make sense that the honor blades can be the body of honor? How is that? Like, that, that makes sense to me. They're blades that give power with no spren. You're talking about the, the ones that... The ten honor blades. Yeah. Or eight or however many there are. I should know that. There's no, some. no, there's ten. There's, okay. ten. <laughs> well, there's only nine because one like never showed up, right? Yeah. Because it was... Tom? Tom, yeah. But, long way to say, honor's power exists. It has to, because it's a shard. Yeah, but I'm saying it exists in the same way the mist still exists, even though preservation was dying. Yes. But that didn't mean that preservation's power was still able to be given as a god Mm. to one of the characters in Mistborn. Okay, so we'll end Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, they're two separate things. Like, Like, there's a... There's the physical manifestation, but there's also like the shard becoming the shard itself after someone dies. Yeah. So I do think that the honor shard will have to become someone else since Ten of Ass is dead. Yep. Unless Odium literally destroyed the shard itself. Which could be a good reason, bringing us right back again, to why Wit said, I will let this world burn. Yeah. If necessary to keep Odium here. So does that mean there's only 15 shards? I don't think that's what it means, personally. I do think that Honor has some... Like, is Honor dead? That's like the big I question know. of the book. I know. It could be the title of the book. But I do think that Honor still exists. Like, the power still exists to be taken up by someone. Yeah. I do. Uh, I, I I would agree with that thought process. But I'm like 90% sure that some commenter is going to tell us that we're wrong. Well, okay. okay. Well, I will say this. But I, I, as of right now... I will let it be known. I agree with you. That's where I am. And it's not where I impossible for the power of a shard to, to dwindle. Yeah. Very similar to other books we've read. I know we ended our spoiler two minutes. Yes. But similar to other books that we've read in the past, uh, a shard's power can dwindle and it can slowly regenerate. And I think that might be what's happening with honor because honor's power exists in the hearts of men, oh, which is true. what it says in either this book or the book before. Well, it, it, another clue in this book, though, Sill asks if... If Spren can, or he he has still if Spren can die, and he's like, well, they can't like truly die, like yeah. they're always still around. She specifically says like a rock, you could break a rock, it's not it's still yeah. there, it's just maybe not a rock anymore if you yeah. grind it into dust. They talk about how it was never created and never is removed. Yeah. It's like that's got to be the basically. same thing with a, a shard, right? I I would agree with that. That's what I would yeah. imagine too. So. Okay, so I think we're on the same yeah, page, yeah. <laughs> and then the commenters are going to tell us we're totally wrong. Yeah, you're going to so. pound us, but it was an interesting conversation. It was a good laugh if we're wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Exactly. Okay. So going from that, though. That was fascinating Which was though. kind of an interesting <clears throat> twist to the story. Um, we do, did learn a lot about Teravangian in this part. I don't know if you have something else you want to talk about from Wit first, though. No, let's talk about Teravangian. So Teravangian and the diagram. Oh, my gosh. So this is where Teravangian becomes... The most interesting character in Roshar. So he has had a secret subplot this whole time. Yep. And you don't know it. But from way, way back, Teravangian made a deal with the Night Watcher. Yes. He hints at this in this part. So he we does. Know that. He mentions yeah. it. Yeah. And so he says he made a deal with the Night Watcher that said... We don't know what the deal was yet, I don't think. Well, whatever he said, the boon, and the boon that she gave him was that some days he would be smart and some yes. days he would be dumb. That's all I'm really... Hey, can we just talk about how creative brandon sanderson is in this moment of the book <laughs> i remember yeah. reading this for the first time and I'm like again i come to my wife every single time a moment like this happens <laughs> in the book and i'm like this guy is brilliant like who thinks about writing a leader who is trying to like pretty much take over the world but is save the world save the world yep by taking over it in some ways but you know, like, <laughs> but he is a brilliant on some days and absolutely stupid on other days and it's totally random and just the way that he's thought about like well how am i going to handle this how are things going to happen just the way still the king because he's still the king the way that sanderson's written him is just it's just 
makes such an interesting story that is yeah. so fascinating, but also makes a character that's so dangerous at the same time. So I he's written it's all these tests for himself, which I think is cool. He has like this quiz that he takes in the morning is like, yeah. if you're an absolute idiot. You can't answer any of the questions. Then they just leave you in your room. <laughs> yep. But also if you're too smart, you also cannot leave your room. Yes. Which, because you're going to start enacting things that people will be like, you're well, a Well, he said a person. lot of things. He's like, well, I enacted this law that if you don't take this intelligence test, you can't have kids. <laughs> you, know, you can't have kids or you should be killed or like yeah, whatever. He had some interesting laws that he was thinking about. And I'm yes. glad it didn't come up. And, but and one, every once in a while, he's like, but they made sense. They were, it was a great <laughs> idea. Like, people, they probably would have agreed with me. <laughs> like, yeah, the logic. They would have just understood the logic and been like, yep. that's just, Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he does have a brilliant day, which is what creates the diagram yeah right so he has one day of just untold brilliance he says this like off the charts 100 times smarter than he's ever been before yeah and he writes on the walls he writes on the beds he writes on everything they just didn't have enough paper <laughs> in those days i guess yeah it's kind of weird <laughs> no i think what happened was like he just had like a moment of brilliance and just it's kind of like that crazy person thing where you're just like i just cannot get enough of this information out of my head fast enough yeah and so i just need to write on every single thing i can find and that's why he's writing go. in languages he doesn't even know yes <laughs> he made up languages so that he could write concepts differently and then he said it took his scribes like years and years to be able to understand even what he was writing on oh. the walls and he was writing in numbers and he was writing in like weird uh what would he call it? like the the type of writing where it's a special, like a poem style where like it's different letters mean different things. It's, it was weird. Then I quote, one, one, seven, three, zero, nine, zero, six, five, <laughs> one, one, seven, three. <laughs> it's just so funny listening to that on the audio book, especially on two times speed. It was like, boom, 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 just yeah, like numbers. I was like, I'm like what 30 seconds skin? Yep. <laughs> but it was actually interesting, like looking at these numbers and like, do you see a pattern when you look at them? Yeah, dude, there's a clear pattern when you're looking at them. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> it makes a lot more sense to me now. Because I'm listening to it, I'm like, I'm like, well, this is a big jumble of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's cool that it's also written out in different ways. Yeah, totally. Well, and, and the other one, too, that's really cool is the very last, um, what do you call these? Like chapter headings? Yeah, sure. The chapter like art. That. He reads it really fast in the book, and that's why he's reading it really fast. It's all one word. <laughs> <laughs> and he reads it all in the same tone, and I'm like, that was weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so sometimes you don't get everything out of an audiobook. Yeah. Let totally. that be a lesson to everyone. <laughs> Seriously. But sometimes you need to, like, actually. It also read the book. shows that Michael Kramer's a genius when he reads those because they read so good. I get the whole sense of what Teravangian was. Like, absolutely He's brilliant a crazy person. but crazy yeah. at the same time insane yeah yeah so he creates the diagram the diagram basically what it does is predicts the future yeah for the rest of the world and i think he's just basing it off of he's so smart that these probabilities and he's getting all this stuff from patterns and history which is cool i mean he, he gets a lot of stuff right but he also that's the reason that he gets the truth the oath stone for zeth because yeah. he's like well there's some people on this diagram that i have to murder so let's find someone who's going to take care of that for us and that's why he takes he takes out all those like high princes and leaders, which is like builds into now there's so much war. He goes in and he helps them, right? As he's like he's the one who goes in and saves, and he becomes like. Uh, this is when you realize he's a well. If you didn't realize this before, he's a <laughs> sick old man. Like yeah, he's, he's brutal. But I, yeah. I do think that he's he goes about it in such a way that makes it seem like he's. He's not like bloodthirsty. He's just so calculated that he has absolutely zero empathy at all. Yeah. Which I, I think he mentions. Like his compassion is higher when he's dumber. Yeah. <laughs> well, and isn't it interesting how the king of Yakoved like realizes like, yeah. of like, I know exactly what you're doing, Teravangian. And like, he figures like, it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, why don't you just take the throne now? And he's like, oh, I'm not taking the throne. He's like, I know what you're doing. You're just trying to like, let them assume that you didn't know and then they just somehow on the records find that you're the next in line to be the king and they'll just choose you but and then he makes him it. his heir right there yeah i'm like whoa <laughs> i know teravangian's plan is working perfectly oh dude teravangian is nuts he's one of it's like zeth like those short scenes with zeth where you're like man i want to hear more about this what's going on I, sometimes like i definitely want to hear more about zeth but sometimes with teravangian i'm like that makes for an interesting story, but 
Not a story that I'm... Really? Like, for some reason, with Tara Vanja's story, my jaws dropped the whole time. I'm just like, what in the world? It's, no, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be interesting. I would love to read it. I'm yeah. just saying it's just like, gives me that like eerie feeling every time I'm like, this guy is Maybe that's why I like it. It's sketchy. So eerie and <laughs> like that guy's messed up. Like, <laughs> he's, he's bad. He's a bad yeah. guy. But he's, he's not trying to be messed up. He really thinks that he's saving the world and this is the only way to do it. Yeah. Like, that's and what he thinks he's doing. He's convinced. He's just working according to the plan of brilliant Teravangian. <laughs> <sighs> that's nuts, dude. And uh, his story kind of arcs through the rest, but that's really the most of the, the, of the Teravangian stuff that I wanted to mention. Is there anything that I um, missed? No, I don't think there's anything else except like him being freaked out when Zeth shows up. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, what are you doing here? They're like, what are you doing? And he's like, after Zeth leaves, he's like, I thought I was dead. <laughs> like He was going to kill me. So that would have been a twist to the story. Oh, can you believe it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been wild. <laughs> I think the, well, I guess it's your turn. What, when is the next part we're going to talk about? Well, he, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Sil's, uh, Sil and Kaladin's discussion of where, um, of why what his thought process with Moash is wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I thought this whole scene was just fascinating. Well, um, Sil always just says, I don't know. It's just wrong. I know. <laughs> so I want to talk about how Kaladin and Syl have that argument. And not really an argument, because like you said, Syl is like, like, I don't know why I think it's bad or whatever. But Kaladin starts getting upset. Like, I'm not able to use my powers anymore. Like, yeah. why is this going on? And then he starts blaming Syl. And I thought this was really fascinating. He's like, Syl, I can't just listen to every single thing that you say like and want me to do and be forced to do things your way that's like having a noose around my neck probably feels like prison to him again being a slave he doesn't want to be a slave but i just thought this logic was really backwards in my head because (laughs) obviously but but what it is is like it's it's not that he's being controlled by sill because the powers that he's been given are a privilege and i think they apply to both of them true true and so it was basically a promise that they made between each other that you have to keep your end of the deal. And so if you don't keep your end of the deal, you don't get the cool powers. Kaladin can live his life however the heck he wants, but he just doesn't get the powers if he doesn't live in the way that he's promised to live with Syl. And I I was just thinking about that and was like, this logic is so flawed, Kaladin. Come on. <laughs> but I, I like the way you explain the logic too, because it also, to me, means that these powers are of honor. Right? Yeah. So unless you are honorable, you can't have the powers of honor. It just makes sense. Exactly. It's not even like, oh, you made a pinky promise and now you get these powers. And if you break your promise as per some judge of like, there's yeah. like, there's some well, person who's saying, oh, that's wrong and that's wrong. Yeah. It's more you create this honor and it's not quite like the... Yeah. Oh, I would go even farther. It's not like what... It's not... In his mind, it's like, I made this promise. It's... You did. It's not like you said this thing and now you're a slave to Syl and whatever she says. No, because he's not a skybreaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> but those are the guys that are like, yeah, your word, and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't even matter what's honorable. Exactly. It's just what your word says. I guess the point is he's not a slave to Syl. He's yes. a. He's slave not even to a slave. To, he's he's not even a slave to honor. He's made a promise that gets him these powers. It's a deal. Okay, yeah, he's a, he's a child of honor. He's he's essentially saying I'm. He's unlocked the door to potential, yeah. but he only can harness that potential if he does act with honor, because that's the the yep. prerequisite. He is free to act however he wants. Yep. But there's just only a few choices that he's able to do. He unless he wants if he wants to keep his powers. But it's still a choice. Yeah. Yes, still a choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, fascinating. It is interesting. Yeah. But the results of that conversation. Is that he chose poorly. He chose the wrong decision <laughs> because he gets upset. And he's like, it's like, well, this is the right decision. And actually, I thought it was fascinating that you brought up the Skybreaker conversation. Mm-hmm. This might be better for later books, but I don't, this is not really spoilers for anything. Skybreakers are obsessed with following law. And actually, you see it in this book. Order, yeah. Just order and law and... Justice. Justice, yeah. Yeah. It's one of the Skybreakers one. approaches Zeth at the very end of the book and says, like, you're really good at following law and everything. If Kaladin were a skybreaker would he have been still a radiant if he had killed elicar you think because he would just be enforcing justice and the law i don't think so 
Really, I kind of feel like he would be. Well, he's breaking his duty to protect the king, which is his job. Ooh, that's a good and point. And he swore that he would protect the king. I, so, I have nothing to say. That, you, like, you just shut it down. But the well, only no, reason why he specifically mentions somewhere that he has made his he has made given his word to two different people, and he can't keep them both. I know. And I think that would be a, a terrible dilemma for a sky. <laughs> I know. Like well, I'm an idiot. Like no, yeah. I well then the reason why I brought it up in the first place is because you see that Skybreaker. What is his name? I don't remember. I, I've heard I it you in the book ask too. Me this. I know, dude. I should have done that. I for forgot. You. I it forgot. was like it wasn't Nail. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I had read the book, I'd be able to know it. But Nile sounds like Nail. I kind of be. It should have been. Maybe it was Nile. Anyways, oh, it's bold to say that because now, oh, now they're gonna tell us what it actually is. I know, dude, but he—he's the guy who's been going around killing all of those poor like people who are like the cobbler, the the shoemaker who is trying to make the shoes. Oh and, yeah, yeah, and all the interludes. And he's trying to like give justice to them because they killed someone like years ago. And I'm like, isn't that like the same thing that Kaladin would be doing for Alucard? But what well, your argument is very valid. It's they are an interesting group, and I'm very curious to learn more about them. Like, for they sure. can do things that are like clearly not like honorable because of those. That anyways, it's fascinating. I think they're not quite as bound by that. So yeah, no, exactly because they're not. Yeah. So he has a conversation with Sil, loses his powers, and then Sil leaves. Hmm. Is that is it next when Sil is like? gives of herself to let Kaladin not die in the chasm. It's like that. The next thing that happens. Oh yeah. He so they, they go out, him. right? They go out with the Dalinar's group and Shallan and everyone kind of a big part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> but they go out and then the assassination attempt drops the bridge into the chasm. Assassination attempt by Sadius. Yes. By Sadius's man guy. Yeah. Like his little. Yeah. And he, and he collapsed the bridge. Yeah, collapsed the bridge. But Adolin grabs Dalinar. So Dalinar doesn't fall down it. Yep. A lot of other people do. And yeah. once again, Sanderson has killed a bunch of innocent he, people. He's brutal. Just like the chasm fiend from before. Like, a bunch of the people from the court just died. You do not want to be an innocent bystander <laughs> in Sanderson's stories. So you yeah, will die. A lot of people <laughs> fell down off the bridge. and Rest in peace. In the bottom of the chasm now. In pieces. But Shallan and Kaladin... The... <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> nice. Shallan and Kaladin both survive and the funniest part is that both of them think that they saved the other one yeah no, I, I think that's it. so funny and the funniest part is shallan has no ba- basis for that because she doesn't even know <laughs> she doesn't even do anything that could save him like, like yeah that's true like, that's that's kind of funny. i know kaladin like like well i guess i saved he her. does like, have that actually does make yeah, a little bit sense, sense but she doesn't like, understand her powers hardly at all I though painted a picture <laughs> just kidding but kaladin only survived because sill was there and yeah. she gave her her power to let him have his ability once again. Yeah. And can I do a quick spoiler for Sunlit Man? 30 seconds. Yes, you should. You should. I if wanna, you haven't I, seen Sunlit Man... It seems like you were hinting at this, and now I really want to hear your take on it. Yeah, okay. So if you haven't seen her at Sunlit Man, skip like a minute. Okay. Yeah. Because that's exactly what happens with Zigzal and Sunlit Man. Because his spren kills itself, like gives up its own essence to let him have his powers. Same thing happened with Kaladin. Oh my gosh, dude. What a crazy connection. Yeah. So it's exactly think, the same thing. But then you would have to say, though, that um, whatever his name was. I can't Ox. Remember. Ox. Yeah. That he could potentially be revived. I, first of all, I think that, but not for the same reason. Okay. <laughs> but Ox had already given him himself multiple times. He was already on his last There's leg. a limit. Well, think about it. He had no emotion left. He had no mind left. He was like barely anything at all. He's barely existing. Whereas Sill is like still full fledged Spren, honor Spren. So you're saying that you think Spren get burned away when they help people who are not keeping their oaths? Yes, I do. That's interesting. I, when you say burned away, like, yeah, some essence of like they're deteriorating. Yeah. When they, it's because they're essentially not just breaking oaths, they're breaking their own, uh, their own essence, right? Because think about the fact that a Spren is an essence, right? In, in the sense that. An honor spren is the essence of honor, just like a flame spren is the essence of flame, right? If there's less flame, that flame spren ceases to exist, okay? Yeah. So if there's less honor, and an honor spren is directly doing something that is against the oaths of honor, then that honor spren 
slowly ceases to exist because the honor involved is less and less and less. Interesting. That's really fascinating. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think That's it's my great. theory. And we'll see if uh, Brandon Sanderson backs me up when we get him on the podcast. Seriously. Are you starting to write down all these questions for Sanderson? No, but they're recorded. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have to go I'll back, go back through. And, uh, if we get Sanderson on the podcast, I will go back through all of our videos and write these down. Let it be known. He volunteered to do that. I will do it. I'll have AI <laughs> do it for me. Oh, Thank there you, you go. Much. That's actually not a bad idea. But uh, yeah, so that that's one of the things I thought. Like He kind of started to kill Sil in that moment. But he survived, and they made it, and he walks through the chasms with Shallan. Which is an interesting part, but I have no notes on that part. I had no, like notes that i wanted to talk through about it i'm realizing now oh my gosh um i did like like this is the part when you start like hoping that shalon and kaladin will start having like a relationship because they just connect so deeply nah i don't like it you don't like it no dude they connect perfectly they both have a horrible history and past and I they're connecting they go it. together i don't well sorry i'm not team Kaladin and Shallan. I was very much team Kaladin and Shallan, even though I love Adolin. <laughs> I, I thought it was great. It would have been awesome for Kaladin. Kaladin talks about being happy for his first time in like forever because of just his conversations with Shallan and how happy he is with her. I think they, I think they definitely could be really good friends. <laughs> but no, in the, in the sense that like they're colleagues now, right? They're both yeah. radiance. So... The reason I don't think I would want it to go further than that is because their like morals are so different. Like Kaladin is all about like strictness and honor, and Shallan is like living six different lives. And, like she just loves to subvert everyone else's opinions and go back behind people and around people and trick this person and that person. I think they'd be miserable. <laughs> so you're. T- yeah, I bet you were also one of those people that were not Team Hermione and, and Harry Potter then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a perfect relationship, Jaden. No, I, gotta, I would say I'm on that team. No, yeah. I'm down for that, but okay. it's different. I think it's different. They didn't end up together either. Because Harry is more of an Adolin, I think, than a Kaladin. Yeah? You don't think he's... Because he's not depressed and stuff? <laughs> 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 no, he's just... His, he's had this opportunity instead of having to necessarily seize it. You know, he's already the chosen one. We're really off track. This <laughs> I know. He's already the chosen one. He goes to the school. He has the opportunities. He has the lineage. He has the abilities. Like, that all just kind of happens. And I think that's more of an Adolin. Like, he's just growing into his role that he already had. Yeah. Whereas Kaladin's, like, trying to seize these opportunities and build himself into something that, like, no one thought he could be. And I think that's a different character. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I, I, I it's we a good will thought. have we will have to do Harry Potter. We've mentioned it so many times. <laughs> I, I, I think there are some. Our wives would be big fans of that. That'd be interesting. Maybe we should get them on the podcast for that. One. How about we have them a four person? But I don't have enough mics. They could just sub in for us and do a Harry Potter episode. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I know. Welcome to the Marty Jaden Show. This is not Marty and Jaden. You know what we should do? <laughs> what would be funny? I saw Dude Perfect do this once. Because they brought their wives in and they did a quiz, like yeah. a sports quiz. We should do like a Cosmere quiz <laughs> just based off the things we've told our wives about the stories as we've been reading them. <laughs> That's I hilarious. Think that would be, I think that'd be hilarious. Is that how it worked with Dude Perfect? Yeah, they were absolutely clueless. The wives were? Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> they, I don't think they got hardly any of the questions right, but they were like... You, they did, that's funny. I didn't know you could get questions right. No, there were questions on like sports. Yeah, like, no, I, I get you. What sport did Barry Bonds play? Yeah. And they'd be like, Hockey? Oh, so the so it's dude, quiz. perfect. The guys. guys quizzed their wives. Yeah. Oh, I thought the wives were quizzing their husbands. No, 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 no. It yeah, was yeah. way better than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, it was like a game show for all the guys' wives. It was really funny. So you think we should quiz our wives? Yes. Wow, that would be hilarious. I think that'd be hilarious. I don't know if my wife would think that's as hilarious. As <laughs> I think that would be. She's like, this is not funny. Jenny. Get me I, off of the show. If enough people like the video and comment that they'd be interested in that, I think we could convince them. If we get. Our thousandth subscriber from this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a miracle. That would be a miracle. But the channel is growing well. And I'm so excited to see subscribers joining us and commenting and just chatting with us about the Sanderson stuff. It's so much fun. It's, it's been the, great. It's the best part of this whole journey. Keeps on growing. I've been loving it. Okay, so they get out of the chasm. They, he brings the... He brings- 
he brings, brings the, the cousin fiend's heart too. And he was so excited about it. He has glory spread in all and Shalon's like, what are you kidding? We, it was dead. And it was like, what? Colin's like, I, I killed it though. <laughs> I know. It's like, work so hard for this. He's got to feel freaking awesome for killing that thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Kaladin's just a Shalon monster. ruined it. <laughs> I know. I like feel bad for him. But it was probably important that they didn't realize their skills at that point. No. Oh. Like, not only did they survive the high storm in the chasm, they killed the chasm fiend. Just the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> With no weapons. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an interesting story but yeah. they made it out and then just and after that kaladin goes to zyle has oh a conversation with well him. i do have to mention my oh, favorite quote of the chasms is like when they're all just like walking around and then all of a sudden they're having a good time then kaladin is just like hey we're down here making bad puns someone <laughs> rescue us from <laughs> ourselves rescue us. i was like that is something Jaden would say that <laughs> is that was definitely hilarious. something i would <laughs> like, say hey somebody help we're making bad puns anyways but they made it out. They did. Elokar. He no. He goes in and chats with um, Zyle. Zyle. And another color reference that I caught. <laughs> I'm loving. I like collect them now because it's so fun. I don't even know what they mean. I know. <laughs> he says something about blue, fresh blue paint on a wall. And Kaladin has no. I don't know what that means either. I don't either. And I've read that book. You don't know what that means? No, dude. I think a lot of these idioms are like in-world F- idioms that you don't oh, know. Oh, it's but- like a movie joke. Yes. Oh, I say this. I've never told you about movie jokes. No. What is a movie joke? I say this all the time to my wife. A movie joke is a joke where you only hear the punchline. And it's everywhere. I don't know. When you watch it, I'm going to ruin movies for you. No, no. They tell movie jokes all the time. And I laugh because I just... Every, it's like... What do you mean? They cut to a scene and someone says... And so I says to him... Yeah. that's the way the water runs <laughs> and it's just like everyone's laughing you're like what that was the stupidest thing i've ever heard it's like the second half of a joke yeah. that would have made sense if you had heard the whole joke yeah but the writers only have to write the second half yeah so they don't even have to make it make sense dude i love that in movies when they do that i think it's hilarious it's pretty funny <laughs> usually it's pretty funny so i think this is one of those essences where it's like he can write whatever he wants because it's just like an idiom to a world that he doesn't have to back up. It's kind of like the movie scream. Like, like Not like the movie scream, but like a scream. Like the yell that everyone has when they're like falling off a cliff or something like that. They have that common scream that has been in like Star Wars to Lord of the Rings. Oh, it's just so like, like Maybe it's not been in Lord of the Rings, but like there's one scream that is exactly the same that they throw in all of them. And it sounds slightly ridiculous, but also like... Like funny, yeah. like well, for, my, for my editing alone, let's let's just let people imagine what that sounds. Can you like. imagine if we put that in our video, like no, get, I'm not put doing a little that. clip in I'm there? Saying, you, <laughs> I'm saying you don't scream either. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. The but mics can only handle so much. It's in every. It's in like most action movies. I'll point it out to you, and you'll hear it in every. Movie. That's funny. It's. Really I'm sure funny, I will. Dude. But yeah. anyway, that's one of those things. So he says the fresh blue paint on a wall, and no one ever knows what that means. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. A lot of the rest of mine come from like the very end. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it continues. It's on. just like the Sander Lancha. This one's pretty cool. The Sander so Lancha is nuts. About it. Well, like things leading up to that, like we won't go into detail. Shalon tells Dalinar that she's a light weaver. Mm-hmm. Elikar is drunk and tells Kaladin that he was right. <laughs> and oh. he's like, he's like, it's so funny, dude. Now he comes in and he's like, he's like, how do you be a hero? Like, like I'm not a hero. He's like half depressed, and Kaladin's like doesn't know what to do with him. Like, you're like, the king. Like, Get, like, pull yourself together. Shape up. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was thinking about that scene because I was like, what would I do in that situation? Just be like, would I try to give him tips? Or would you just be like, you're clearly a lost cause? Like, yeah. I, <laughs> he does say you should abdicate. Well, I Step just, down. I just think it's funny how the the weeping makes everybody depressed. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, the fact everyone, that he comes in crying. Yeah, everyone's just super depressed during this time period. And it makes sense. Like, that happens, like, here when it gets, like, wintry and, like, the that's sun true. is covered. Like, Seasonal depression. Yeah, you don't see sun for a long time. Like, that's the worst, dude. So, And that's why everyone's... <laughs> that actually opens up a lot of interesting... Because you're right. It's a very sad part. Everyone's, like... Com- contemplative and very sad and trying to assassinate the king and was assassinating everybody yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so anyways i just thought that was funny like and there's not even stormlight to light up places because like yep. all the stormlights run out it's just yep. dark and and while he's there doing this with the king and moash and all these folks dalinar is on the shattered plains yeah in like his big attack yep. right and he's having a conversation with the storm father and this is one of my favorite parts of foreshadowing in the whole like sandra lanch end of the book because he's having a conversation with the Stormfather, and the Stormfather cuts it off. He's like, I have to go. A daughter disobeys. 
Oh, how cool is yes. that? <laughs> That's still, I know it. It's so awesome. Because oh. you're just like, That's cool. I love that part <laughs> of the book. It is just he, he's already mentioned, or still has already mentioned, that she's like his favorite. The Stormfather's favorite. Yep. And I don't know why yet. I don't know if we learned that. Yeah. But it's just cool. Yeah. And you're like, it's the best spread. <laughs> I know. Can and, we Oh go ahead. And she just wants she's heading back you know she's heading back to Kaladin. Yep. Because he's like, no, don't you do that. <laughs> you hear him like, wait, wait. <laughs> it's like being a, a parent in the middle of a conversation. Then all of a sudden you hear you're like your kid like got into the bathroom or something like that. You're like, oh, crap. Like, hold uh, on a minute. I got to take care of this. <laughs> I take care of this crazy kid. I know. Yeah. Actually, that's very apt. It, that's that happens a, all the time. That's what it felt like in the book. Chatting with a friend and you hear some crash. And you're like, ah, I got to take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone disobeys. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. he goes, so he loses his connection. He ends his conversation with the Stormfather. Yeah. And well, then continues. Before you there. go into that part, do you feel like... The Stormfather kind of bothers me a little bit. He is so whiny. I'm like, dude, like, calm down. Like, whiny? Like, he's whiny, to, like, like negative, and, like, all these things. Like, like you're dead. Like, there's nothing I can do for you. And, like, with even with Esh and I, he's like, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. And then, like... <laughs> I do think he's, he's very like, apathetic. He, I know, he hates everyone. And it's because of, like, the uh, broken oaths and things like that from what he and talks about. And he lives about. through it. Yeah. But it is, it's almost comical, like, yeah. how, like, <laughs> much, like, how unhelpful he is. Like, his defining is. characteristic like, is like, unhelpful. Yeah, he's unhelpful and hateful and doesn't want to try anything to the point where, like, but he's also super, um, he's also super, um, like, prideful. Like, he thinks he's that like he knows. powerful. He, knows he thinks he knows everything. Yeah. And he's gotten so many things wrong. Like, <laughs> like, like, every single time he's like, you can't do that. Then it happens. Or, like, he's like, you're going to die. Like, there's nothing we can do. I'm going to send in my storm well, and just sweep us, away, like, the, the helps bodies. helps feel better about when he says that the Everstorm can't be stopped. Because then it makes you be like, well, maybe it can. Because <laughs> this guy's always lying to us. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Even Sil says, like, yeah, that probably wasn't a good idea for him to send his storm. Because he just thought that, like, you weren't going to survive anyway, so just clean it off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah. anyways. But we can't, we ought to continue in that Sill story. So the Sill story is big. Because that's yes. when Kaladin goes to defend the king. He goes and he says, you know what? I'm he hobbling. Makes the right across, decision. Hobbling down the field, but I'm like, I got to go. I got to go to the king and I have to protect him. And his big thing is you cannot have him, right? He says that multiple times. Moash, full shard plate, shard blade. Graves, full shard plate. Shard blade coming after the king together. He doesn't even have a weapon. I think he had a side knife that he brought. Well, he had Maybe a spear, he had a spear, and he got shattered instantly. Yeah, that was fast. But so he's he's standing in between him. He says, "I will protect this guy with my life," which is an interesting shift for him because yep. I'll protect I mean, those even that I hate. Right? Yeah, if it is right. If it is right. That's a good caveat. Good caveat. <laughs> but yeah, so he he this is the that's the third ideal, right? Swears the third ideal, the third oath. Is that the third one? Yeah. Does it take three to get your shard blade? Yeah, apparently. I don't know. I think you're right. No, 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 not always. Not always. Well, no, yeah, but for, for a Windrunner. Yes, because Pattern specifically mentions that Light Weavers only swear the first ideal. I did not know that until I, I read that again. I didn't know that either. I was fascinated by right. that. No way. Yeah. So she's done. She did the first one and she's... <laughs> she's good to go. <laughs> now she just has radiant. to tell truths, whatever that means. Yeah, I don't understand that very well. I guess we'll figure that out more as we go. Yeah. But anyway, back to okay. Kaladin. Yeah. So in doing so, swearing the third ideal, the brilliant Stormlight, right? He gets his shard blade, which is, I mean, Sill is yep. the shard blade. And they, I think they just take off running. Like he doesn't even fight him, does he? Because he just takes the king with him. It cuts from that scene. But we know that he took the king away. Yeah, because he, 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 he hid takes, the king. He takes the king <laughs> to Lopin's house in a place that no one would expect. Because <laughs> uh, Navani later is like, we looked everywhere. We looked in the barracks. We looked everywhere. And you're like, oh, yeah, I hid him somewhere. Nobody would look for him. <laughs> like the Herdazian's house with his mom. Lopin's mom. And his mom's like, no, you're eating that. You're eating that. And he's that like, from... I'm not hungry. He's like, I don't care. You're eating that. <laughs> and you're just like, that's that's so fantastic. I that's, love Lopin. It sounds exactly like what you would expect from that culture's... <laughs> It's great. So he has to eat. He has to sober up. So funny. But they protect him. And but that's... Kaladin explodes into light. Yeah. And cool. after he swears his oath, 
is able to heal immediately, completely yep. shocks Moash and Graves, yeah, and then takes off to go save everyone. But also, the slight other catch that I didn't get there, Graves the whole time has really been working for Teravangian. Oh, yeah. yeah. He mentions all those he things. He does, about he does, like the, about all the things he's learned and the fact that they knew about um, Yasna this whole time. Yep. That's pretty wild stuff. Yeah. I did not catch that before either. But <laughs> I liked it, so I'm I'm still caught in the uh, him going to Herdazian's house because that's when Lopin takes in Stormlight. Oh, he takes it. So this is when you first realize that he's going to get other people that yep. are going to be underneath of him. Other Windrunners, him. yeah. Yeah. I don't, what do they call him? Yeah. When, Does he call him anything? Just Windrunners? Anyway. Are they Squires? We'll figure that out later. Because yeah. they're the Knights Radiant, so Squire would make sense. That's what I would Page. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he does that, and then Logan takes in Stormlight, which is really cool. Because yeah. it lets you know that, like, the next book, we're going to be talking about a lot more interesting stuff. <laughs> I just love how Lopin reacts to everything. He's, like, he's like just staring at it. He's like, oh, yeah. Like, hey, let me stick you to a wall. <laughs> like, the first thing he thinks. I've got some glowing I need to do. <laughs> i got some glowing I need to do. First thing he does when he shows up to, like, the... To Yurathiru is like, like, so, and we have some Herdazian claiming to be one of the princes now. Like, <laughs> like, oh like I know exactly who that is. <laughs> I know it's so funny. Yeah, I think. But what was it that happened just before this? Is that when we learn from Sil that all of the shard blades are dead, Spren? Yep, and she that's why it that takes ten heartbeats because you have to wake them up. You have to like you revive connect them, every them time. to a heartbeat. This is also where. The whole, of the, all the books leading up to this, when we were on our reread, I was wondering, like, why in the world does Shallan have to wait 10 heartbeats? <laughs> I love like, that part. Because yeah. <laughs> I could just see in that scene pattern just being like, ah, eh, you just kind of expected it, so I just rolled with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just see him just rolling his eyes, just waiting 10 heartbeats. Like, <laughs> I just think that's funny, because I, I totally see that, him just being like, well, she, she expects it to be 10, I'll just, I'll just wait, I guess. <laughs> I know. Because she's like, hey, you've taken 10 heartbeats. He's like, yeah. I don't need to though. <laughs> I think that's great. That's the it best. just makes pattern pattern. Okay, I want to talk more about Shalon, but we have to get back to the Sh- Sander Lanch. Okay, so I want to say you get Sanderson. Well, okay, let me back. Everything up. happens. Every, every happens. single person. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just in any normal story, of course they're going to get caught in a storm on the shattered plains. That's what any other author would do to make it interesting. But Sanderson is not going to just let them get caught in the storm. They are, first of all, you, like it can't get worse than that, right? We're not only going to have them get caught in the storm, they are going to get caught in two high storms, and one is going the wrong way, mm-hmm. and bringing demons from thousands of years ago. Yep. Oh, and Sa- uh, Seth, the assassin in white, is going to show up all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like, I was going to mention that. Like, <laughs> the assassin in white also just happens to show up right just then. literally cannot get worse than that. Yep. Like, all of those moments at the exact same time. And Adolin's horse died. It's terrible. Devastating. It's a terrible it's just, moment. This is why I love Sanderson's books in Sanderlanch. Is like, he puts you in the most despair. There is no way out. There is no way. And then he finds a way to make it work well. And just be amazing at the same time. And work well in the sense that, like, some people survive. (laughs) But it's brutal the whole time. People are getting electrocuted. Yeah, you get that sense that you're like, I'm not sure if everyone's going to survive this. No. And I like that you are a little bit on the edge of your seat for that. Whereas some stories are a little bit too, like, guided along the path. Where you're like, yeah, these people are important to the plot. They can't kill them off. So, like, even if they're getting a sticky situation... They're still going to make it through. But well, this one, you're like, honestly, any of those people could have died and we would have been like, well, dang. Well, let me give you a specific <laughs> example of someone. Yeah. It was uh, Rowian. So he becomes, he's one of the other high princes there. Yeah. Very small part. But um, Dalinar is fighting the assassin in white and like is losing. Yep. And then Rowian realizes what's going on and runs with him and his team of like soldiers to go help and dies instantly yeah because zeth All of brutally kills killed. him by touching him throwing him into the sky and then he falls to the ground and dies yeah okay and while he was in the air he killed all of his men yeah that was that's nuts. pretty brutal They're pretty brutal it happens in seconds and what's crazy about this is sanderson's just so real in his storytelling because again this is something like another author like any other standard author i feel like would have like you get your um character like we're gonna have a hero moment this guy, 
who is just this high prince that decided to come in and make the right decision is finally going to like, he's saving the day. He's yeah. good thing he came. He's saving Dalinar. He even but mentions at the beginning of the battle, he's like, you'll be a hero for surviving this Exactly. Day. And he Sanderson goes the real route with it. Like, you know what? He not only people it. that are like going to be heroes will not survive. Yeah. A lot of the high princes didn't make it. Yeah, and they're not even going to have a glorious death. They're going to die instantly. Yeah. That was insane, that's dude. That's always so brutal. <laughs> so but I brutal. like the fact that Bridge 4 was like, we just saw them die immediately, and we're still going after this guy. Like, yep. maybe we get lucky. Yep. And there's a couple of them who did die from that. Crazy. Which was nuts. Super sad. Kaladin comes in in a burst of light and <laughs> takes the uh, assassin wide right away. Coolest fight ever. Crazy. The fighting in the sky, changing Sil into a, from all a sword, into a spear, into a shield, into a hammer. Like, all those things are... I just love that. I it's just, an exciting... It's so I love cool. the fact that he just claims the wins. Yes. His it's whole like, quotes with that are just so cool. It's so good. You know that <laughs> cinematic wonder. <laughs> They're like, they are mine, and I claim them. Does that mean that it's in our top five for the overall book? It's got to be in the top five. The fight? Oh, yeah. I'm, it, I know we said last episode that the duel with Adolin and the... Uh, versus the other four shard bears. I keep wanting to say three. It was four, Jaden. It was four. It was four. <laughs> but I keep wanting to say that that duel was number one. That scene could be number one. It's with not. Zeph. It's not. It's not? No. Oh my gosh. That you, duel. That I was still so, think about that duel. You still think about it. After I had read the book years ago, I was responding to a comment today. And I was like, you know what? After I read that, I was still thinking about it. Until I reread it. <laughs> It's just so good. It's so good. What is it that makes it so good? It's just the fact that it you, you, he's tricked into this battle and then like no one comes to save him. Kaladin's like, because you don't know that he can do these things as well as he can. Like you didn't know how lashings worked. You didn't like have all this stuff. Yeah, he didn't know how to do lashings at all really. Until, yeah, he didn't. So yeah. he's going into it. He's like, I'll just figure it out. I'll do what I can. And he goes in and it's just a crazy battle. I loved it. It's it's cool. It's so cool. Wow. But I know I know Kaladin and Zeth's like air fight is pretty cool too. I know. But I, I just, don't think it can be first. I place. just love how he but what's our the way list? that do we have a list yet? I know we have to get to the list, but I want to talk about Shalon before okay. we get there. Talk about Shalon. But but I'm gonna get the list pulled up. The moment though with Dalinar, he comes in to save Dalinar first. Dalinar shoots into the sky, you think Dalinar's dead. But oh, then he yeah. comes floating down. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Zeth's like freaking out. Oh yeah. my gosh. Like, I, I am truthless. Um, okay. I want to talk, before we talk about top five. Okay. We have to talk about the big reveal from Shalon. I did not realize that we learned this in this book. I thought we learned this in the later book. Oh, yeah. It straight up says that Shalon, the reason why she has issues is because she has killed both her father and her mother. Yep. That is insane. And we had a little bit of a conversation of this off air, and it totally confirmed like what I was thinking. And she straight up says it. This is I have to say this carefully because I think her father <laughs> was a horrible human being. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. And there's not even I think he was. He was a terrible, bad person. Terrible. Like the worst you can get. But it is so like crazy the connection that of like how he became that human being is because Shalon killed her mother. Mm -hmm. But since she killed her mother, her father decided to protect her and take the blame for killing her mother. And so him taking the blame for killing her mother, I think, led him to take on other, um, like, starting to believe the lie. And start thinking, like, well, I have to start acting like I'm a killer that would do something like that. So, like, a situation created the monster, basically. Yep, and so it created the monster himself. I'm not saying it's Shalon's fault that he is the way he is and that he, that it's, like, it's her own fault that she was abused by her father. But I, I do think it's a very interesting, like... Yeah? Like... It's an interesting... Story. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy, is the, is it the, is, that's is, true. That's the best way to describe it. It's a tragedy of yeah. a family that, like, and she blames Pattern. Does it say what's in the safe? It was her, her shard blade. And she said her father put the shard blade in there to hide it, whether, like, but he didn't realize she would just get it back anyways because she could just, like, evaporate it. Yeah. But anyways, 
it's just it's a tragedy and she, that's why she ends up at the very end just saying like i am like she is upset with pattern she's really upset with pattern she's like this is your fault that my family is destroyed because i killed my mother with that sword but it does sound like her mother was trying to kill her at the time and so she did it in self-defense it'll be interesting to learn more about that story i know really really crazy just it's just crazy i just another thing i love about sanderson he always gives a story behind the villain yeah and like a lot of times these guys are trying to do good in the beginning but then they turn to evil methods to continue their originally like good intentions yeah and it turns them into a bad guy you think about amaram He's trying his best to figure things out and do what needs to be done. Similar to what Dalinar is doing, he's just doing it poorly. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think that's a good point. The villain with an interesting backstory. I think that's why like Marvel and Thanos did so well. Oh, Th- yeah, Thanos is amazing because of that. He is the because you're just like, oh man, I, I see where he's coming from. It's still but horribly still evil, still like a terrible person. Yeah. But you're just like, he really believes it. Yeah. And that that really helps with the storyline. He's not just bad because he's a bad guy. Yep. It makes for the best villains when yeah, they have... it does. Yeah, it is awesome. I love that. Is it time for top five? I think... Anything else? I did so, have one thing about Tanavast, but that we already talked about. Talk it. about... Uh, did you want to talk about Tanavast at all? Just the fact that he, he held the honor shard. Like, that's what they said. Wit says that Tanavast was the, the honor, and that he was dead now. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's basically all he says. He basically says, I like that guy, and then he died. Yeah. <laughs> Um, other quick fire thoughts. Um, I think uh, Adolin kills Sadius at the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> sticks a knife right through his eye. Just <laughs> just stabs him in the face. Yep. Oh my gosh, dude. Um, yeah, I, I it think was quite the adventure. Oh, in the last and half of the book and Wit sees uh, Yasna at the end. Oh yeah. Yes. And he finds, still out that alive. She's, he finds out that she's been in um, what's Shades, it called? Mar. Shades Mar the whole time. I and know. they're like, yeah, because the spread don't like you. <laughs> I <know. laughs> like, yeah, I heard. I knew you were there because everyone's talking about you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. It seems like something Yasna would do. And she's like angry. And she's bossing all the spread around. <laughs> she's like, yeah, we don't like that lady. I know. Then what does he make some comment about her showing up in the middle of nowhere instead of like, well, like, like now we have a long walk. It's like it's your fault for choosing like <laughs> to reappear here. That's funny. Yeah, because she, so she's back, which is cool. Yep, Yasna is back. So yeah, that's gonna be quite the interesting reveal at the beginning of the third book. Dalinar bonds the storm father. Storm father. Wow, a lot of stuff yes, happened. I know. <laughs> Just which officially makes him a bondsmith. Yes, which at this point in the book, we have absolutely zero ideas of what that means, especially since the, he says, like, I will not be giving you any shards. I'm like, well, what can you do then? Like, is there a with no shards? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, wow. See, again, a complainer. Like, <laughs> Unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, they, he's just. But we have a, a truth father's a complainer. Truth sayer or truth seer? Truth sayer. Oh. I think it might be a truth seer. I can't remember. Because all he says that he does is he sees. Yep. So, truth, truth person. Another rapid fire. Is Renarin the one that's been writing the numbers and the yes. countdown the whole time? Yep. I did not know that until I read this again. The storm comes and he writes it on the, the wall. The zero, 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 zero. Yep. Did you know that the first time you read the book? I did not catch no, that. No, this is the reveal. This is the only time you find that out. Well, I know, but when this is the reread. Did you realize that in the first read? Yes. I knew that I knew that he had written the numbers. Oh, man. I did not know that. I did not remember who wrote really? it. Really? I didn't even put it together. I think I was just to the part and I was just so like stoked about everything going on i'm like yeah that's weird like he's just writing things on the wall like (laughs) i don't know why that went over my head but yeah which is why he was in the room every time that is fascinating dude crazy so you knew that even during the reread the whole time yeah i should have just asked you i'm like kind of surprised i kind of thought it was down and asked me she's like what's with the numbers she's writing the numbers renard you told her (laughs) (laughs) she gets she gets like so far into a book and then she's like i just i don't she doesn't like a bunch of loose ends as she's reading Sanderson does a great job tying up loose ends. I know, but at the <laughs> end. So she's yes. like, if there's too many things to think about, she's like, she wants a couple of things answered so she can just kind of keep moving with the plot. Everyone reads differently. And that she's definitely out one if of those I'd known, like stories. If I'd known that in advance that Renarin was doing, I'm like, oh my gosh, like that would be answer, ask, that would lead to more questions than answers. Hey, maybe it was a better experience then. <laughs> reading it that way. <laughs> know. Who knows? Like, what yeah, is wrong so that, that's something I did remember from the first book. Yeah. Renarin first, was also First wanted. read. He's also one of those super cool characters in that book. And I'm excited for Oathbringer for Renarin because 
he it's starts good. getting cooler. <laughs> I thought, why? Well, I, I thought Rhythm of War is where it gets cooler. No, he we have a lot to read. Them. It's but Oathbringer, you'll definitely learn a lot about Renarn. Okay. Wow, a lot. Even in that rapid fire section, I feel like I that. know, like, dude. Holy cow, how did I miss so much stuff? I know. Holy crap. Okay. So, do you have our top five list, which you said you would share with me in the last week's podcast? Yeah, and guess totally what? Didn't. It didn't happen. <laughs> Okay. What do we have right now? Our current top five are Adolin and Kaladin's duel versus four shard bearers. Still top. Still number one. Number two is Kaladin and Zeth's first encounter in the uh, assassination temp of Elikar. Oh, yeah. also so good. Yes. Because um, that's the last clap from Dalinar. Nuts. Okay. Yasna's assassination and Shallan's soul cast of the boat. Okay. I think we've surpassed that now, but yeah. Okay. I don't know. To me, I was like, "Oh, so good!" Like that, you're you're true. reacting that way every single time. That's the reaction I was looking for for me too. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, so good on that part." Um, Kaladin's first flight. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll agree with you with that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's good. It's still good. It's, it's still good. good. I think he has surpassed that. Okay. I think we're gonna have to come back to all of them that have ever made it into a top five, and then do like a top twenty-five ranking of like of all the, the entire Stormlight Archive. How fun would that be? Oh, that'd be. That'd be crazy. I think we should do it. Um, That'd have to be a whole episode, though. It'd take forever to go. Through. Oh, yeah. It'll be a full episode. It'll be full. Look okay. forward to it. Are we it. extending this top five to like seven? Mm mm. Okay. And then the top five, the last one in this current top five is Shallan kills Tin. Okay. Oh, okay. So we've got lots of. I sins. think top two stay. Okay. Well, let's let's list out what, what do you think that are nominees? Okay. Um, Kaladin's third ideal. Yes, that's a great way to describe it too. Reaches third ideal. Then um, his fight with that's a separate part. Kaladin fight with Zeth. Zeth. Yeah. Final fight with Zeth. I mean, discovering the Oath Gate is cool. I don't think it's a top five. Though. But can they all be fight scenes? <laughs> <laughs> um, Every single one of our top five is going to be a fight. Okay, well, I gotta pull this top five to my notes of that episode because there were a lot more that I actually really liked from this episode. Um, I'll grab mine too. We had the. We uh, learned a lot in this one. When Kaladin comes out of prison and sees Adolin was in prison and then all of Bridge Forest cheering for him. I actually thought that was a really fun moment. That's I, a good moment. I liked That's that moment. moment. It was a good feel good yeah. moment. Teravangian in the diagram when you learn about how that works. Oh, yeah, dude. That was actually here. Vangian. Good luck with autocorrect on that one. If you do it once correctly, then it doesn't like start autocorrecting it like every time, oh. which is nice. It even like suggests it, but that's nice. I gotta get better at this then. I know. Right? I always spell it wrong the first time. That's the problem. I know. There's a good chance I did. So, <laughs> so Kaladin giving the shard blade to Moash is that one? Yeah, that's the same thing. Out of okay. prison, give shard blade to Moash. Oh my gosh, we didn't talk about it, but Kaladin fighting the uh, the Chasm Fiend. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's all Kaladin fighting stuff. I would just moments. say Kaladin and Shallan in the Chasm is probably a scene in itself. We'll, we'll add Shallan to that moment just so we don't feel like it's all Kaladin. Well, she was a big part of that. She was a massive part to it, yeah. <laughs> it was her shard blade. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Then... Um, what do you want? Dalinar bonding the Stormfather? Do you want that one? Nah. I don't know. Unless you think it was a good one. No, I'm just trying to think through everything. I think that's a good list. Yeah. I'm okay with prioritizing those ones. Okay. I still think number one and number two stay, personally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Adolin kills Sadius. No. Not a top five? No. Okay. It's an interesting scene, but it's we're talking about some powerful scenes. You're right, you're right. Okay. So, I think everything from three down gets replaced. You think Adolin and Kaladin's duel, number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if we make a list of the entire Stormlight Archive, they'll probably still be number one. Oh, dude. I love that scene. You're probably right. It is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Okay, cool. Um, number two is Kaladin and Zeth's first fight. I still think that's good. You think it's better than their second one? Oh, I just think it's cool because Dalinar and Adolin are there too. 
but it's probably not cooler I, than their second I am fight. going to say it beats out that because the what, whole... What, does the second fight? The second fight, yeah. so their final the, fight, we'll the call The wind it. and the skies are mine kind of fight? Yes, it's it's those quotes that really make it. And yeah. that, like, he's fighting with, like, all... Like, the fact that he can whip out quotes like that while he's fighting... Gotta give him credit. You know he's working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay, gonna put that I'll give you that. Two. That could be number two. Kaladin claims the skies. We'll call it that. Oh, nice. Is that what the <laughs> chapter is called? I don't know. <laughs> skies fight with Zeth. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. What are the ones we have that we need to place? Okay. Um, so we've got Kaladin reaching the third ideal. This is probably number three. Oh, so that also is going to beat out the... Their first encounter? It happens in the same place. It has to be, <laughs> dude. It is... It's a different part. I think it's... But the, it does happen in the exact same yeah, place. Yeah, you know, it does... Oh, oh like the location. The exact same yeah. location. I think it beats out their first... Zeth's first encounter. Because it's just powerful, dude. I almost start crying this time. I was like... Okay. It was just... Yeah, that's, you're it, right. It it's was emotional. just like... Oh, my gosh. Like, like It's an emotional like, time. I'll give you that. Okay, big number one. three. I'll give that. Okay, Kaladin reaches third ideal, number three, oh, and that scene. maybe should be number two. You think? I I would I uh, I agree with you. I yeah, think that I, should be number two. I agree with you that okay, that should be number two. And then number three would be Kaladin and Zeth in the skies. Crazy that that's a third rank scene. That's a powerful book if that's the third rank scene. Oh man, this is a really good book. What book. else do we have? Okay, um, we've got. Uh, Kaladin coming out of prison. Not gonna make a top five, I don't no. think. Teravangian diagram. Oof. I know. Well, I'll let you know. Could what it we've be got number so far. five. What's number five right now? And then Kaladin, Shalon, and Chas- Chasm. So Teravangian and Shalon and Kaladin, the Chasm. So those are the two we need to place. Okay. Our top five as it is right now. Adolin Kaladin's duel. Kaladin reaches third ideal. There's number two. Number three. Kaladin claims the skies for his fight with Zeth. Number four is the uh, first death encounter the first death encounter which makes number five yasna's assassination and soul cast is teravangian's diagram and kaladin shalon in the chasm better than that i would put teravangian's diagram as an honorable mention yes i would put shalon in the chasm probably not on the list yep i think that rounds out our top five then because then kaladin's first flight would be bumped number six then and and shalon killing 10 is number seven yeah. So that's I, our top five. I would five. agree with that, but I definitely want Teravangian of the Diagram to have an honorable mention. Okay, cool. Just a little asterisk next to the list. I agree. Because that's a big one for me. Like, that's honestly huge for the Cosmere. Yeah. So I think that's a big It's just deal. so cool. It's so cool. Okay. I think that's good. We got our top five. And what an end to this book. It's been a fantastic ride for the last four weeks, right? Yeah. Four, four weeks. parts, four weeks. <sighs> It's amazing. We had to read fast for four weeks. This last part That's especially. A long it's like 18 book. hours of reading. 18 hours. But that means we are two out of four books in our preparation for the fifth book coming out again in December, which is coming up. I know it's 11 months away, but it will come very, very quickly. Uh, so if you want to keep reading along, we are probably going to take a little bit of a break from Stormlight Archive at this point. Just so we, just so we are still prepared for Wind and Truth. Because we don't want to be so... We like, don't want to finish them all like yeah, eight months early. If we finish early. too early, <laughs> it's not going to be fresh. And so exactly. We're going to get them all done before December. We'll but. space out Oathbringer and we'll space out uh, Rhythm of War a little bit more. Yep. And that means we have some freedom over the next couple of weeks to read maybe some different things. Maybe some relevant things to what's coming up movies wise you'll see we've got while. some fun who things knows? planned who knows we'll also get into well, we some <laughs> yeah we do we do we also get into some miss morning era 2 as well jayden yeah, has not I read am those so excited for miss morning I am era 2 so stoked i actually just talked to someone at work today who said miss morning era 2 was his favorite of like all the cosmere stuff then i'm even more excited i know dude so i didn't we'll, think it was that good but i thought it was really good but like, if you have any other recommendations of books that we should dive into while we're kind of on a little bit of a stormlight archive break let us know but otherwise we'll see you in the next video next week